So Cerbero is going to heal himself, try to provoke another attack of opportunity from the Steel Predator. It's smart enough, it's not going to take that attack of opportunity here. Um, seeing that, realizing that Cerbero is maybe a bit too tough for it. Um, Why does he, he want to provoke attacks? Because every time he blocks an attack with his punch block, he gets an extra attack on top of that. Oh, so, sweet. So he's trying to, yeah, basically go the creature into um, attacking him. But Steel Predators are actually pretty smart, so it fell for it the first two times, not going to do it the third. Um, it would be Manny's turn, but I believe we've confirmed that he's dead. Um, yes. Just a pile of shadowy goop on the ground. Yep. Um, what flavor is it? Dead flavor. Mm. So I think we will move to Vesper. Okay. <laughs> Five foot up and finish it off. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just laughing because um, the situation sucks. <laughs> Okay. Attack. Can I please roll above a 10? Yeah, I'd like that too. Um, yeah, that would be nice. Is that eye not removable from the goos? Okay. Um, so let's see here. So you're attacking the steel predator, so the thirty one will hit. Yes. It looks like it turns its attention to you. It was going to try to probably put you down next, but the combination of the non-legal damage that Server Art has done to it, and now with your attack, that will actually knock it unconscious. Don't they disappear when they go unconscious? They disappear when they drop below zero HP, but it did not drop below zero HP. Step it while it's down. Yes. All right. But that was your last attack, unfortunately. So. Yeah. All right. But now it's Get down. It, Roll high on the first attack. <laughs> All right. Is that everything for Vesper then? Um. Yeah. <laughs> Guess right. so. so I feel very so useless after... right now. Join the party. Currently, right. we have a gnome who's doing nothing, two people who are unconscious or <laughs> dead, and two warriors who are basically missing every round. Yeah. This I don't know how we're going to get out of this. All right. Join it. It's your turn. All right. All right, I am going to sneak up and grab the, the scroll and then move a little further away behind the pillar here and take a look at this scroll. All right. So you can make a spell craft check. I rolled a two. Awesome. All right. Um, do you want to re-roll that or? Yeah, I feel like uh, it's time to start burning before I just die. OK. The dice hate me. 
Yeah. So you pick it up, you look at it pretty carefully. You, um, you're not 100% sure, but you realize that this is a, not just a conjuration scroll, but a conjuration healing scroll of pretty high level. And as you're looking at it carefully, you believe that it might be a scroll of true resurrection. Not it's used at the moment. Dead and resurrected. Can you resurrect uh, undead? Well, I said too bad you can't. Oh, okay. Well, Manu's not a typical undead. You know that. He's said that. In my mind, you're undead. Now, if if I get the chance and it's usable on you, I don't Drannik's know. not that much of a dick. Well, if he was ever alive, conceivably, the scroll would raise back his body, right? Well, that would be interesting. But that's the thing. He's never been alive. So says him. Yeah, we haven't really gotten a call on that. But the bigger issue is when he was alive, he was a 10-year-old boy with no superpowers. Uh, that's not the case. He will, he's been a ghost and just grown up as a ghost. So who knows what would happen. Well, we'll say in your current position that you are relatively close to one of the other scrolls. Did you want to take that up and look at that too? Yeah, if, if I knew there was more more than one scroll near, I would have grabbed them both, snuck off. Okay. We'll say this is the, the only one you can get from this position or as you move up here. So then you, if you still have an action left, like a swift or anything, you could make another spellcraft check. Yeah, I haven't used any swift actions. Uh... There we go. That's a better roll. Okay. So you identify this as a scroll of Eye of the Beholder. Yeah, I'll have to look that one up. So I'll, I'll let me send it in check. It basically gives you several eye stocks and some of the powers of the beholder for a time. And just as a note, Lake, um, uh, Manu would not be subject to the ability drain, so she would have to have spent the point to remove it. Okay. So that would technically grant him another save against the effect so because it would be on the second attack that she would do that um if the first one didn't get through so she's pretty stingy with her fate points naturally still fails yeah wait it was will right it was will yeah yep oh well um don't get any bonuses that you're not counting here um, besides the not subject to, I don't believe so. I'll take a look, but. Okay. Uh, this was a will, right? Yes. Her power allows her to cause any creature to become more ugly, even if it would normally be immune to that effect. I mean, is being more ugly just the, is that the effect of the power? And the charisma drain is just how you express it? Well, there's more to it than that. 
everybody. Because <laughs> I would argue, mind you, becomes more solid the more charisma he has. The more solid he is, the yeah. more ugly he is. <laughs> but no, it probably wouldn't work. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'll take a look through everything. Okay. Well, so then that's it for Drenic, I believe. Yes. So we'll move to the Allied Steel Predator, which is just going to, I guess, continue trying to unload its attacks on this Teodal. Does he get his breath weapon? It does have its breath weapon, so we'll say that rather than attack this one again, it'll keep leaping until it's in an ideal position to hit as many of them as possible. Because from here, it could move up and it could attack, but it would only hit four at most. Whereas if it was here, it would hit, no, still only four. I guess it might as well do it now. I'm just trying to see if there's like a more ideal positioning. Yeah, it's only most going to hit five if it's in an absolutely perfect spot next turn. So might as well do it now, right? Yep, definitely. I was going to ask him to stay adjacent to me for flank, but if he can get four instead of one, that's amazing. Oh, wait, sorry, not one to two, one to three. So then it's... Okay, so then it's going to cause them to make their fort saves. So they all make it but one, so they're going to take, they do not have metal or stalwart. Um, like, what was the save yes. you see on that thing? Um, the exact save DC for her ability. Yeah. So I believe it was 32. Okay, I would have passed the second one because I have already applied my charisma drain, and that's why my will save was so low. Really? Yeah, I, I have my the drain applied. That's what told me I was dead. And okay. So so, so then, leave him dead. Um, Fuck it. He's dead. Well, I mean, I don't like killing players. Um, and uh, I thought I there was a chance you'd survive the attack. But what was the ability exactly that gave you the immunity to the drain? Just, just, uh, just so I can double-check that? Um, I am not subject to ability drain. So non-lethal damage, ability drain, or energy drain. Okay. So then, yeah, and that's not one of the kind of dead immunities I took away, like the immunity to my affecting. I don't know. So then, yeah, I mean, that sounds legit to me. That you would have saved then. Nah, I think it's okay. I think he probably just died. Well, I don't want to go soft on players, but if you legitimately lived, I would prefer that you lived. Um, I don't want to... This is kind of like with Abishu, where we thought he died, but actually he survived because of the interaction between regeneration and figure of death. Right. right. Let me let me check everything. I need to make sure that's right. I think... So what we could do <clears throat> is we could say that he was reduced enough to be out of the battle, but not completely dead. Right? Yeah, I have to check everything. So... So... Okay, we'll come back to you then. Um, after you double check that, and then I'll give an explanation for how I think that's possible that that would have occurred. Okay. So then that was this Steel Predator's turn. Metal Master is going to continue trying to make its perception checks um, as it's searching around. What was the last stealth check that was made by Drank? 33. Okay. I'm pretty sure they have natural gnome detection.
you wonder if like you know how like gnomes and dwarves and stuff have special abilities to notice unusual stonework and other things have you ever wondered if like stone elementals have a special ability to notice unusual gnome work or dwarven work i love that <laughs> that was awesome yeah <laughs> Okay, so I think this is the round that it is going to detect drink. You said it was like 33 or something, right? Yes, 33. Oh, wait, uh, oh, wait. It's dark down there, it's 35. Yeah, and it's far enough away that it actually, even on that at 20, it does not see you by because of distance. Okay, never mind then. So it continues trying to search around. The zealots continue doing their thing, waiting for their enlightened ruler to return. We move to the ooze. So the ooze is going to attack from its available targets, which right now are just Cerberard and Vesper. So it goes after Cerberard again. So why not? He has juicy spells. It's stunned this round, isn't it? Oh, you were correct. I even marked it, and I didn't notice because I was not looking close enough. You're right. It is stunned. So the term you're looking stunned. for is cheating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one is unconscious. I remember that. So this steel predator is unconscious. So then we move to these cultists that are running back up. What's the purple dot guy doing? Um, so for some reason I removed him from initiative. I'm thinking I have a um, stone thing on him. I think he was turned to stone by Volcana. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Unfortunate, but fair. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So is that. Abishu heals another two points. Please don't do this. All right. So yeah, I think mine you would have saved because he would have gotten a 33 if I did not apply the drain. And... But, yeah. Does that mean you're still alive? Maybe. I mean, I probably would have died anyway because I was right in front of Volgana. But... Okay, so what I'm going to say then happened there is that um, you... um. So you were hit by an effect that didn't quite kill you, but she had said that she wanted to see your true form. And as she did so, she um, basically, uh, you said that when you lose charisma, you felt like you would become more physical. Is that right? No, I think Manu, since he's a ghost, he would probably, his charisma, when he loses charisma, he would probably become more ghost-like, right? And when they gain charisma, they get more ability to interact with the world. At least that's how I... That's how you think about this. it. Yeah, because okay. like, yeah, that's how strong they are. Okay. So then, in this case, many would disappear to a faint shimmer that makes him look like he is almost non-existent, like he's not there. And his body would have shriveled up, like I said, into almost like a fetal position, but rather than dying, he instead takes the form of a young babe, essentially laying there on the steps in a very faint glow, one so subtle that Falcana and her dwarves didn't notice that there's just a manu baby squirming on the ground near the bottom of the stairs. All right, I kill her. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I said, it, you can't since we got this... Off, it's going to be that Manu's out of the 
con this encounter until he gets healed or otherwise brought back. But we'll say that he's down. Yeah, non well, you, you can't kill babies in video games, so I'm basically immune to everything. That's the rules. You get horrible rating. I like your thinking. Alright. So then... So you guys are noticing that there's these two old are managing to heal up about as much damage as you guys are dealing every round currently, or at least between the area attack and the dwarf that's wailing on them. They um, they are little healing engines that are just healing this all back up. You wonder how long they can do this. And so we move to Eridavar's turn. Okay, well, I will cast Divine Favor, and then I will move up to beside one of these dudes. These cultists don't have the eye above them, right? These ones do not, no. In fact, most of them have their eye stocks closed. That would make it too easy. So that's my turn. All right, Eric Ever is able to move up and do that. Colt is right next to him, sort of opens an eye stock to look at him, but uh, does not attack him. Um, I think I mentioned it before, but you would know that um, these are not equipped with any weapons. They have a shield and a dorge that they are manipulating. Um, the dorge is like a, essentially like an orb, um, psionic wand. And it will close its eye again as Erdavar comes near. Um, Erdavar and the others on the top level will see more dwarves reinforcing reinforcements running into the room. Um, they took, take a quick look around and are confused by the steel predator that apparently just blasted all of their allies, but they don't probably know what to make of that exactly. Um, so now that the Steel Predator is down, Server Art is going to a five foot step up. Does Vesper need any healing? You would probably ask. Um feeling like a fifty two out of seventy. <laughs> Great. Well, he'll go ahead and heal her then. If I had to put a number on it. Yeah, so he'll just heal her to full and oh, thank um you. lose. He is down to two spell points, by the way. Oh, God, he's... Stop! We haven't fought the Pagana yet. Wait, you don't have to heal me. Save your save your points. All right, so we, we would move to Mainu. Mainu is God. Um, probably prying on the steps of somewhere. Yeah, it's quite annoying. All right. So then, so Rannick is probably aware that Fulgana has um, come back into the chamber that he's in from wherever she went before, and that she is beginning to make her way to float back up, basically, um, into the battle, the main battle. But she is still down here in the treasure room with him for now. We move to Vesper. Oh, and Dranik would probably notice that she is sporting a new lens. Oh, fuck. Uh-oh. Um, Kill the predator and get up here and start flanking. Yes, 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 yes. I, I finish off the predator. Do you do a coup de gras? Yes. No, just take a swing at it while it's down, so you can move this round. Okay. Attack! <laughs> Alright. Do you make a standard attack? I believe that... Uh, yeah, just whatever. Yeah, normal. So you're getting plus four, plus two. It has, this is against if its I, flat If I foot. miss... <laughs> The natural 20 will be so upset. Well, I don't uh, think you're going to miss with the 20. It's just whether or not you do enough <laughs> damage to kill it. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd hit with the uh, first and the third attacks, but you don't. And you crit. You do confirm the crit with the, the 
first attack as well. So it's unconscious. So you do 42 points of damage. It's not dead yet, but it is bloody. No, it's not bloody even. It's just winded and unconscious. So annoying. If we just leave it, will it come back? If it has any receives any healing or like other things, potentially, yes. Just leave it and come help me. Uh yeah, whatever. I just run to the north. Okay. I don't think anyone's going to heal it before the battle's over. Yeah. Everything else and there's like 20 of these healers, so we really need to get rid of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, could I leave a couple of after images while I run by? Yep. Um, you'll need to make an acrobatics check to move that way without provoking from the use. It has reach. Oh. Is it still stunned, or has that worn off? That would have worn off on its turn, I believe. Uh oh. By the end of its turn. Okay. Oh, look at me. Sweet. Let's see that triple. That would be cool. Yeah. You kill Volgana be... with tumbling. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You confuse her so much that she twists all yeah. her eye stalks in a knot. And yeah, then... and they get tangled and... <laughs> Right. No circulation there. Okay. She chokes herself out. You can move the images where you want. No, no that's good, actually. I want it to be right in front of the ooze. Did you say uh, there were so more, we... d more dwarves yeah. in the main room? Is that those guys off to the northeast? Yeah, that's right. So they, they've been kind of charging in from down those steps. From where they were before. That I see a baby and they're like, well, that's not an issue. I'll just leave. <laughs> just punt it. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I realized I was talking, not thinking about it. Sir Berard would have healed, but then he also would have tried to move around the ooze. Um, if he could. So the Ooze would have taken an AOO against him, actually. And then he would have tried to block that. Because he's Ooh, a 45. Probably... Yes. Okay. Well, that was close. Um... So I don't think he can block this, actually. So, yeah. So he just takes a huge chunk of damage there. That shows him for trying to... Yeah, what was he trying to do? So he realized that Abishu was down and that he's in need of healing. So he was trying to move back north so that he could position himself in a place to eventually get to Abishu. I don't even see Abishu. Well, let's see. I don't have a vision on him, so let's see if he would have... Or do I? He's directly north of Volgana's pit. Oh, that area's yeah, just so shaded for me. Yeah, actually, that's really dark for him, too. He couldn't see Abishu then. So maybe he wouldn't have done that. I'm getting a 50-50. Uh -huh. We'll say hi, he, he didn't. So we'll say he didn't. He was smart enough not to provoke from this thing that is going to very likely kill him. Um, Does he have an effective way to fight it? He could smite it, use his last smite, and fight it that way. No, I think that's a bad idea. It should come after me since I was fighting it and I magic missile its eye. It should be really pissed at me. Yeah. So we'll see what it does on its next turn. But for now, it is Draenor's turn. Did he heal himself? Yeah. Serverard had healed uh, Vesper, and that was just his move action he was trying to use, so. 
Oh, I'm. Are any of the party members within telepathic range of me? I might. They be. are. I believe Air Dapper is. All right, I'd let them know that Volgana's on the way back, and is there are a lot of the clerics or whatever near the hole? They are. Uh, I would choose wherever Eridavar would tell me where the most most of them are, and I would cast silence silently from my position here. I don't think that would do anything. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately like I said, they're, they're mutant mutant deaf. Deaf. They, they manifest yeah. psionic powers without speech. Oh, it's psionic powers? I thought they were chanting. No, that's why I tried to clarify that. They're was chanting going on earlier, but that's was from the dwarves, not from the Teal. And from Volgana, right? Yeah, Volgana herself. Wait until there's chanting, then silence them. Haste would be Haste really would be. handy. Yeah. Uh, or spider climb. Like, with silence, I could just do an area. Haste is different. Haste is an area, too. It's the so, range that's the issue. So from your position, you're about 40 feet away from Aradava, roughly, roughly. It's... Yeah, the range is only 40 feet, though. The range is longer than 40 feet. It's got to be at least short range, which would be 25 plus your level. Well, I guess not. Come a little closer. Or just wait, cast Spider Climb on yourself so you can get up here. That might not be a bad idea. Then you can just walk right up the wall when you need to. Vesper's about to be in range of haste, which would be a nice perk. Yeah, I'll cast Spider Climb on myself and then probably climb up partially onto this pillar. All right. Make a stealth check real quick. Yeah, plus two for the dark, right? So 37 total? Correct. What do you mean, just use it for lay on hands? Well, do I have a choice in whether or not I accept healing from him? You do not. Okay, because I think I've been at, I don't think I've taken any damage this session and I'm at 92 hit points, so I would have healed off of him at least twice. Okay. Well, we can just do that now if you want. Okay. Then I won't bother with the lay on hands. Okay. And then it sounds like that's everything for Tyrannic's turn, so we'll move to the Steel Predator. Which um probably gonna stay where it is to need concentrating on these to go full. Tell him to come down to... and flank with us. They're all effectively one creature, aren't they? Sort of. So I mean it's I mean it's trying its best to hit them and actually hurt them. Of course if we keep rolling low, which is crazy. Um, but it hits with at least one attack there. So, depleting the power points, if not the hit points, effectively, of those. The Metal Master does not find Dranic, um, and continues searching the piles, and when sees Volgana, it 
sort of gives like a sad like nod like didn't know didn't find it and Volgana will just sort of speak back and she says doesn't matter you fool have a replacement did you tell them about the lens so they can sunder it oh jeez oh jeez All right, so it goes after one of Vesper's images, the ooze does, and it takes out one of her images. It did that, it was going to do that as a full attack, but I think here it's going to... Yeah, so I think it's going to realize that it just go after hitting Aerodabra. images are getting deflected. So yeah, it's air diver took out a tie. It's it's and simple instinctual beast is it will just move up to him, slither up to him very quickly. So as it's doing so, it's going to do this as an engulf attack, um, which would hit you with essentially the attack roll for that second slam attack. So thirty one, it looks like would miss. He can attack, move, and attack. So the way it works is its um, engulf ability allows it to um, engulf anything that it passes through that is up to two size categories smaller than it. So it is a um, gargantuan creature, so Aerodabber is small enough that it could try to engulf him. Okay. But um, it still failed, I think, to hit here. So technically, that it's supposed to be a... Uh, CMD check against your CMD, but your CMD is higher than your AC, and um, I think 31 is nowhere near cutting it. So it tries my, and it fails. My CMD, I think, is 32 at the moment. It might be a little higher because okay. I have Cat's Grace on. 34, I okay. guess. Okay. So, yeah, so we'll say that uh, it sort of tries to engulf you and the teal the next to you, but it hits this pillar and it stops in this location. So let's do some of things. Steel predators sleeping. More of the cultists running to reinforce. Abishu's healing still. And then that one. This one's going to continue making its attack, just trying to do its best to hurt these cultists. And that's not a bad one. Yep. And they are continuing to just heal up this damage to their collective. Um, as we move to Aerodabar. Okay, um, I don't see much point in attacking the uh, guys until we have reinforcements because they're just healing as fast as we're going. So I'm going to go back to pummeling the uh, the ooze. Hopefully its defenses have gone down without the eye. Hmm. I don't find that hmm, very reassuring. No, you reminded me that it has a there's a weird interaction with the ooze where it's supposed to Well, here, I'm going to roll for it because I'm not sure how this is supposed to interact. So do you want to call high or low for Herodomar? Hi. It is low. So let's say it, you don't get the benefit of that. So in this case, its defenses are still going to be relatively high. So then, That's good. I rolled complete crap, so. Yeah. All right. 
so it didn't roll high enough there. And then anything else for air diver? Um, I don't think I have anything else. I guess I could spend a key point. Oh no, I used my key point to do the key strike. So yeah, I'm done. Okay. So this one is going to basically charge that steel predator. Um, and it will hit. It will not pierce through its damage reduction, um, except with one point of damage, I believe. This one is going to realize the folly of that, and it is going to do a double move around, but I think it still provokes from the Steel Predator, which will make an attack of opportunity. And it will try to block that. It fails. Um, and it gets hit for 23 points of damage. So now we move to Sir Berard who now is going to move up himself. That and flank the see. ooze. Yep, so he'll move up, he'll flank the ooze, help with that at least. Um, and I think he's going to save his healing to heal, him, heal others rather than himself, so he's just going to um, save those spell points, but then heal himself with a lay of hands, and I guess he still has a standard here. So he's going to activate his uh, whatchamacallit, his um, combat patrol. Okay, so we would be at menu. So then we move to Volgana, who is... Down below. So, as luck would have it, Volgana also doesn't see Drenic, although you've been quite lucky, I must say, on these stealth checks. It's not <clears throat> luck, it's gnomish sneakiness. And she uh, positions herself here to um, go back up and rejoin the battle. And so uh, Drenic will see her do so. He is, she is now floating about 30 or so, 40 or so feet above her. <laughs> 